pulmonary vein, all the veins, the vena cavas and the pulmonary veins. All right. Now, let's talk about some general characteristics. These are dead giveaways. See how thick wall this is an open tube, correct? See how yeah. thick walled this is? This is an artery. All of the arteries are very thick walled. Okay, here's another one right here. Now, with yours, they actually cut yours far enough away you can see where it's starting to branch into left and right. All right. Now, we're not there yet, but we'll go ahead and discuss. This is the pulmonary trunk or pulmonary artery. And right here, they've left enough to show you where it's going to branch into the right and left pulmonary artery. And again, the pulmonary, let's see if we remember from our presentations in any of the stunning lecture uh, that I have given to you. The pulmonary artery is taking what kind of blood where? The oxygen and the lungs. Very good. Nice. Good job. It is taking <laughs> deoxygenated blood to the lungs, and it is being pumped there by which chamber? Left atrium. Left atrium. The right atrium. Right. Mr. Barrett? Right ventricle is correct. So, if we want to work backwards, we can insert the probe, okay, without poking a big hole in it. We can insert the probe down into that chamber, and it should be coming out then what chamber of the heart, if we're going to work this backwards. You just, ever, he just said it. It should be the right ventricle, but it's kind of... It's being difficult, so what we'll probably do is start the other way and go, all right? We'll go from inside out. So now, as far as the chambers goes, everyone see this grayish flap of tissue on the top? Yeah. And there's another grayish flap of tissue <laughs> over here. These are called auricles, and they are basically extra bags for the atria. They mark the atria because as the atria fills full of blood that will expand and allow the atria to hold more blood. So these are your markers to where the atria are. So this one I'm looking at the back of the heart because I know the pulmonary trunk goes over the front, goes right to the front if you remember from the diagrams that we've had. The pulmonary trunk goes over the front or the anterior part of the heart. So now if I'm looking at the posterior part of the heart, that means now my right is the right, my left is the left. All right? So this is the, this is the right side of the heart. This is the left side of the heart. So under here will be the right atrium. Under here will be the left atrium. So the trick is to find the openings to the vena cavas. Now some of these... Some of your hearts are going to be cut so close that your vena cavas are going to be gone. So imagine if my thumb is your superior vena cava. When they cut it, they cut down here at the base so that all you're going to see is a big gaping hole going into the right atrium. Some of them, the heart I worked with last, last bell, it was cut right down here, split it, so that the back half of the vena cava was there, the front half was gone. All right, so it, it all depends on what Billy Bob at the slaughterhouse did with this sheep when he cut the heart out. Now, this still has a lot of fat around it, so I'm going to try to find the opening to the vena cava. I think this is going to be, this might be inferior vena cava down here, which should hopefully take us up to the superior vena cava. All right, it's definitely going into... All right, beautiful. Here's what we have on this particular heart. And we have a... I don't know if they did it or you did it, but there's a hole right here in the, in the vena cavas. Okay? And this is the way I'm going to have... So, for example, this heart would work on the practical for the vena cavas because they have them. Again, some of them are going to be cut so close that it's just going to be a big gaping hole. But if we look, if you look at the end, do we see how thin the wall of that vein is? All right, that's the easiest way to tell the difference between an artery and a vein. Arteries are thick walled, veins are very thin. You can see how thin that is. That's why it makes them hard to find because with no blood in them, they just collapse on themselves, and they're very difficult to locate. 
but on your practical, this is how I'm going to have it pinned. I will run a probe. Yours would be a, a fairly decent heart to use. I'd like to see that fat taken off right there. But I will lay the heart here. I will run a probe through, and then I will pin here and here. And I will ask what vein is marked by pin number four and what vein is marked by pin number five. All right, so you have to know this is the top of the heart, so this is going to be superior vena cava. This is the bottom. This is going to be the inferior vena cava. All right, the vena cavas are carrying what kind of blood and are going to deposit it in what chamber of the heart? Oxygenated in the left ventricle. Wrong and wrong, <laughs> but it's a good try. Isn't the opposite? It is. It is. Well, yes. The correct answers are opposite of what you said, but then that, that holds true for... I think you meant like opposite of the one that you said. Uh, no. Yeah. All right, the veins, correct? Veins bring blood back to the heart, correct? So the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava are bringing blood back to the heart. Is it oxygen rich or oxygen poor? Poor. poor. It's oxygen poor. It's going to dump it into what chamber? Atrium. The right atrium. So, knowing this... If we angle this probe down so it goes not into the uh, inferior vena cava, but down into the heart, we know that this is the right atrium. And we can open the heart then, and we can look back and see the probe. We can see the probe come through that side of the heart. So if we know the probe is going through the superior vena cava into the right atrium, and we see this valve right here, see that valve? Everyone see this? See the flap of tissue in the valve with the little cords attached to it? What valve is that that's directly underneath Semilunar? the right atrium? Separating right atrium from the ventricle that's underneath the right atrium. It would be the tricuspid valve. Very good. So, on this heart, I can ask, I can put a pointer in through here, and, or I can put a probe in through here and ask and put a pin or just a question on it that says this probe is pointing into what chamber would be right atrium or I could put a pin up here and say what chamber of the heart is right here right atrium all right I could also put a pin in this flap of tissue right here and say what valve is at this pin number eight whatever it is all right that would be the tricuspid <laughs> valve so that means this chamber underneath because basically if you look at it from the outside if you were to wrap your hand around the heart, this is all ventricle. Right and left ventricles are down here. Your atria are just these little chambers up top. So most of the heart are, is ventricle. So we open this up. We know that this side is the right ventricle. This side is the right ventricle. The left ventricle is the largest chamber of the heart. Okay, so when we open up and look, we see a large open area. We know that this half is the left ventricle. So this half has to be the right ventricle. And we've already verified that because we have run the probe through the superior vena cava and down into the heart. And again, it comes out, should be over here on the right side of the heart, right through the tricuspid valve going down into the right ventricle. All right? Wow, that was fast. Did he get my email? Did you get your email? Mr. Hammer, are you here for Mr. Hammer's class? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. It's fine. You may... <laughs> if you are going to throw it, please get to one of the sinks. Oh, you were just being dramatic. <laughs> you may take pictures at Will. If he were in here. <laughs> Will. Somebody named Will. <laughs> All right, so we have down here, we have the right ventricle, all right? And again, the dead giveaway is the size of these chambers. The largest chamber of the heart is the left ventricle. All right, now, the tricky part is finding how the right ventricle will come up and out through the pulmonary, pulmonary what? Right ventricle pumps blood where? Pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk. All right. And I poked a hole in it, but. 
a, I look up like uh, that poster every time he asks a question. <laughs> Well, uh, so I can't make the probe. I can't make the probe curve around, but if you look, it's it's right here. You can see where it's moving. It's right here. So this is pulmonary trunk. All right. It's really difficult to get the metal probe to bend and go around. Let's see if I can get it. Thanks. <laughs> oh. Nice. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh! All right. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't think that would happen. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. All right, so that means we have right, we have right ventricle, and it comes up and out the pulmonary trunk. Now again, yours shows us the branching from right and left pulmonary arteries. Also, with this one, I, I'm gonna guess still has someone's phone is going off in there. Uh, so the better answer, I, I'm sure, is life-shatteringly important. This call. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. All right. Also, if we tr trim away a little bit more of the fat, we're going to see a little piece of tissue. Let's now. Here's where we really see. If you remember, there's a little piece of tissue that's going to hold the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. And I believe in your packet, you had that page where you had the 15 things you had to label. This was number 15 on that page. And it's a little piece of tissue that holds the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. Two words. First one starts with L. Second one starts with an A. It's right here. Right there. Arch. Nope. <laughs> it's Latinized, yeah. It's the ligament that holds the arteries together. Artery. Close. It's ligamentum arteriosum. Is it pretty much? I got it yeah. right. Yeah, you did. You just did the English version and not the Latin version. It sounds right. a lot cooler. The Latin version sounds a lot cooler. No, All right, English now, let me show you ligamentum arteriosum. Let me show you an external marker that will separate right ventricle from left ventricle. As so you can see, this large line that comes down right here, this is one. Uh, the, the sulcus, called the coronary sulcus, where you're going to have coronary arteries and veins, blood vessels, follow this path. This sulcus separates right ventricle from left ventricle. So this is the largest chamber of the heart, the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle, okay? And again, separated by the anterior coronary sulcus. If we look on the back, there's another one back here, but it's kind of concealed by the fat as it comes down here on the back. But the one on the front is very easy to see. And if we open the heart, if we mark where this is and we open it up, you can see it does divide between the, because it follows right down the edge of that right ventricle. All right, so that is an external marker for the separators between right and left sides of the heart. All right, now let's come back over here. Let's go to the left side of the heart. Blood goes to the lungs, through pulmonary trunk, goes to the lungs, uh, it branches off into a series of smaller arteries and to it surrounds the alveoli of the lungs and you know there's about 300 tiny air sacs in the 300 million tiny air sacs in the lungs called the alveoli then they become oxygenated through a, a counter current exchange system obviously set up in the alveoli of the lungs and then the capillaries and then it comes back into the what tube what blood vessel brings oxygen rich blood back from the lungs pulmonary vein. the pulmonary vein now we know that this is we mark this right here as the inferior vena cava over here we have another large opening and this is where all four of the pulmonary veins both the ones from the right and both the ones from the left are going to join and empty their contents the oxygenated blood into the left atrium so we know looking into this chamber, this is going to be the left atrium. And they don't really give you a whole lot of pulmonary artery here. This is all you have. And again, look how thin the wall of the, of the pulmonary vein is. All veins are thin-walled. All arteries are thick-walled. So we know that this is the left, should be the left atrium. And to verify, we insert our probe down through the heart again. 
and lo and behold it comes out where the largest chamber is so we know that that is definitely the left side so this has to be left atrium this has to be left ventricle and this valve in between the two is the bicuspid, the bicuspid valve also known as the mitral valve okay now if I were going to mark I am going to ask the valves so I put a pin into this and ask what valve is this but if I were going to ask you to identify the chordae tendinae which are these little cords or tendons that attach to the valves this would be a good spot to do it because these are most prominent and easily seen I would probably work try to work a pin through those cords and simply ask what are these thin cord looking structures attached to this valve okay or I would ask the question if this is bicuspid valve then what are the thin cord structures attached that close the valve during heart okay. contraction alright now this is bicuspid valve and this is would be tricky for everyone to see but this is the bicuspid valve so when it closes it constricts this way it close, squeezes them together this way but we see a little groove right here where there appears to be nothing stopping blood correct goes up this way this is the exit path for blood leaving the left ventricle when the left ventricle contracts it sends what kind of blood where oxygenated, oxygenated blood into the aorta and as it goes into the aorta it passes through what Somewhere valve right. which semi you're correct it is a semi aortic semilunar valve. Aortic <laughs> semilunar valve and if you look on this heart you can kind of see you can kind of see the the valve inside there that stops blood from going out the aorta so that means if I insert the probe into that gap right there then that should take us up and out the aorta and lo and behold it does all right now the one extra thing that's on here that I'm not going to ask for those of you who looked okay there's another artery cut that's right here that comes off of this right here now just so we can show where that is coming from that is coming off of the aorta I don't know if I can I'm going to go backwards. That is a major artery that branches, the first one to branch off of the aorta. And as you can see, it goes right back through that aortic semilunar valve. So we know that that's coming off the aorta. Does anyone remember the first artery that branches off of the aor aortic arch? Starts with a B and rhymes with achiocephalus. Brachiocephalus. Very nice. All right, so that's the break. You probably not going to ask that one. All right, because it's just it's. I want to just work on the heart. All right, so I'm probably not going to ask brachiocephalic. If I do, that'd be a great bonus question. But we know it comes off the aorta because it just if we trace it back, it goes right on down into the left side of the heart. Yeah. All right. Are there any questions? You might want to see any of this again, real quick. Wait, before I turn you loose. When we do it, are there going to be like a bunch of probes in every heart, or are we going to like have to <coughs> look around to figure there out? There are going to be a lot of hearts, and I will have them situated so that it is a heart that would be very good representative for the structure that I'm wanting to ask. So, for example, if I want, this would be a good heart to use for the vena cavas, because I can do this with them. I can run this probe through and have it go in and out superior and inferior vena cava maybe so are we not doing the show and tell first there is no show me don't tell me quiz for this section did you have something you wanted to bring in for show and tell <laughs> so like I know you said you're going to put the probe through that one, but like for all the other ones, would, is there going to be like a probe in them, or is it like just that? Some of them I won't need to put a probe in. Okay. Some of them I will. Okay. I guarantee you there's going to be a probe for the vena cavus. Gotcha. All right? 
there may be, depending on what I have, there may be a probe for you know, something internal. This probe is inserted into a chamber, so on and so forth. The one thing that I did not discuss, now that everyone's starting to break apart, is this wall of muscle tissue that separates the two ventricles. What kind of septum? In, I can't read that. Interventricular septums. All right. So here and here is interventricular septum.